Hey guys, the Reverend Worm here with another Pistons tutorial. Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to build something pretty cool. This piston based minecart station. And uh, this station is what I usually call a through station. Meaning you can go either way and arrive both ways. See? You push the left right button and you go right push the left button you go left and you can arrive in either direction and it works fine now if you've been watching my worms world videos you know i've got some through stations in my world and i'm going to shortly be replacing them with this style because i like it a lot better it's not nearly as glitchy as the kind i was using and it really uh, is a great station. Now this station is based on an idea that I saw on the Minecraft forums. Someone had a design similar to this but uh, it relied on having to hit buttons and stuff trying to stop yourself in the right place. But I've really simplified it down and made it all automatic and I'm gonna show you how to build it. As you can see it's a really compact design. There's there's not that much to it and uh, most of the wiring is just hidden underground. Now this is the least compact part about it. The wires have to switch over so that you can be facing the right direction to push the button and go in that direction. And as you can see you don't really have to worry about bumping your mine cart out of the way piston will take care of that. Mm, that way it may be a little iffy, but it's still mostly reliable. <laughs> now the main trick to this is that sticky pistons can actually pull rails from the side and push them, so you have a piston here that pulls your rail out of the way and you have another piston under here which moves the back plate up allowing the powered rail to send you on your way and as you can see the powered rail is also powered by the push of the button now I've dug away the dirt here so you can see each side each set of two pistons has their own reversible signal generator this one, I just uh, removed some of the blocks here. The functionality is still the same. You could actually remove all four of the blocks in the corners and replace them with redstone just fine. As you can see, this piston is inverted so that it's extended normally. When the signal comes through, it retracts and then this one extends moving the back plate up out of the ground one of the hardest things to get to work is actually the powered rail it's a little tricky not only is there the signal coming off of the back of each of these buttons going to each side's reversible signal generator there is also a line of redstone underneath both buttons sending another signal down underground to the uh, to the powered rail here now I'm gonna build one of these step by step so that you can follow along and hopefully that'll help you uh, build it correctly okay the first thing I'm gonna need is actually some wood to place my buttons on doesn't matter what you place it on, whatever you want. But, uh, I like ma making my stations out of wood. So, two buttons spaced apart like so. Now you just want to dig down. I'm going to use my shovel. Uh, underneath it, place redstone wire across the middle. And come to the back and also place your redstone coming out the back. Now here 
you're going to want this signal to go around and control this side and this signal to go around and control the other side. It's not that hard to do, it just takes a little maneuvering. There, that should go around. This one will come up. And why not? I can go ahead and bring it right over this way if I want. This is all a matter of uh, just putting your redstone where it won't interact with any other redstone. And it's really not that hard to do. The hardest thing is to keep it all hidden, but I'm sure you'll you'll get that worked out. Okay, now that we have our control panel, we want three spaces in between it and where the other wall is. So, this is where my wall is going to be. And let's see. This is where the track will go along this line, so we want our first set of sticky pistons to be here. Skip one, and here. Fill in the rest of the wall, like so. And now we can go ahead and add our tracks. Here will be the powered rail, and the rest of it will be standard rail. Now you want your you want to have more powered rails coming off here to keep your momentum up, but you don't want them too close. You see, I have them here about one, two, three, four, five, six, about six spaces away, and that seems to be enough to uh, not give you too much momentum to overshoot your stopping track here, but to give you enough from here to get to here and continue on your way. Okay, now what you want to do is take this track, which I should have done this before I even placed the track, but it's not a big deal. Dig down two and place sticky pistons. Uh-oh, there seems to be a cave down there. Well, we'll just work around that. Oops, that's too far down. Okay, and then you want to place blocks on top of that, you know, whatever you want to build your station out of. There, and there. And you can go ahead and take these two rails and place them back here, since they'll be attached to these sticky pistons anyway. Now, you want to dig out a pretty good space. The uh, reversible signal generator you know, is a pretty compact device. It's only 3x3 three three or 3x4, uh, technically, if you use torches. And um, it's really easy to hide directly under the ground, so uh, that's probably not going to be a big deal. Now what you want to go ahead and do is add torches directly underneath these pistons. And that will extend them and your system be ready to go. All you have to do is add the timing. Okay, now as you can see, these two pistons are set up the right distance apart so that they can both be controlled from here. And let's see, I'll need one more space here to put my reversible signal generator. Here and like I said, you don't actually have to build them with blocks here. You can use redstone, but I like to go ahead and do that. Now, for this setup, we want this piston to fire first. So this block has to be our input. So we'll just set it up like this. Go around in this direction. And set our delay. Now, this block should receive its input here. I could be using my shovel for this, but 
it will receive its <laughs> input here and that will come from this line that you've already swapped over just dig it down to where it needs to be this doesn't have to be pretty well that has to be there though <laughs> don't punch out any necessary blocks so just bring it on around and there now it's set up right if I were to press that button it should fire my pistons on this side in the proper order let's give that a test it does nothing okay guys one thing to always make sure of is that your uh, signal is actually reaching <laughs> the place you want it to go to so be sure to use those repeaters and let's try this again perfect there now all you have to do is repeat this setup on the opposite side taking note that you'll have to uh, whereas the input for this one was on this side behind this piston the input for the opposite side will have to be over here behind this piston and the only difference is the direction of the repeaters I've already showed you how to do this but I'll go ahead and show you again if your input is here on the right side you want to place repeaters facing away from your input block and then go around clockwise if your input is here on the left hand block like it will be on the opposite side you want to do this make your repeaters facing away from the input again but follow around counterclockwise and remember to set up that delay okay I've gone ahead and set up the other side as I just showed you and now both of these work great so now what we need to work on is getting this signal to power this block and that's a little weird to do because being so close to all these pistons there's bound to be some strange interaction so you kinda have to just work at it a little bit what you could do is uh, easy to do it the easy way you basically just place your redstone like so and that will power it you'll probably want to put a repeater here if you do it this way so that your backboard is in position while your uh, rail still has power hmm. I did some well I busted that out there trying that again see that would work fine probably <laughs> But um, this doesn't make for a very well hidden station because you'll have to put some sort of block here if you want to cover up your wires and it just kind of interferes with you hitting the buttons. Okay guys, while I was editing I realized that a solution to this little problem would be to use half slabs here as they will cover up your uh, wiring and still allow you to get in and out with relative ease and they uh, don't really interfere with anything and it makes the whole process a lot easier so if you want to use the easy method I'd recommend doing it like this and just forgetting about the next few steps but I'm gonna leave them in just so you can see how I did it originally and uh, 
yeah. <laughs> Good luck with it. To do it the way I've done it on the uh, example station, you kind of have to make a mess. <laughs> You've got a tunnel underneath, adding torches as you need to. And you'd think you could put one right here, but that fires both of these pistons and does this little number, which will then break everything, so not a good idea. So what you want to go ahead and do here is dig down under the pistons. Whoops, there's nothing here. Make sure your signal is coming from here. Run it under the pistons so that it doesn't interact at all. And let's see where I'm at. Wrong spot. And where we want the sig signal to end up is this block right here, which will have redstone on it. And we use our vertical wiring techniques to get that set up. Because we want to make sure that this torch is off. So underneath it, add that and it looks like we're going to need one more so go ahead and dig down let me get my pick under here dig down one more because the redstone has to attach the side of this block to actually power the torch on top of it. And there. That torch is now off. Okay, now back up here we have this torch and what we want to do with it is connect it to that block there. If you can see it, that should be the block that the powered rail is sitting on here. So we add a block there, put the redstone on it, and that should be that. Now when I press a button, I don't know what happened. Okay, for this, <laughs> you want to make sure that this redstone line is at least two under this piston, and that this redstone... Um, vertical wiring is completely encased on all sides including the front like so there the uh, compactness of this may cause some strange interaction with your pistons and when you first fire it it might you know break your rails off like <laughs> did with mine but that was probably because I didn't have this in the right place but now it should work absolutely fine. If there is a strange interaction like that, my best advice is to work on this line. It's a little finicky and um, using this torch here next to these two pistons sometimes interacts strangely. Um, but I, I assure you, it works. It works almost every time. <laughs> but that's the best you can really say about anything. One more bit of advice when you're covering this all up. Be sure to remember, you have to place your block here. You can't place a block here or it will burn out this torch. So that's the one thing has to be there if you want it all hidden. Well guys, I hope I've explained this well enough for you all to be able to build your own two-way piston station. As always, if you're having any trouble with one of my designs, 
leave me a comment and I'll be sure to try and help you out in any way I can. Um, that's all for me guys. Later.